Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you that weren't on the last panel, my name is Matt Beadle. I'm the Senior Manager of Business Attraction and Strategic Planning at the RT Park. Um, so this panel is called Building a Tech Hub in the USVI. We had RT Park staff talking about all, all the work we do here and how we operate as an, as an economic development organization. But we really wanted to make sure that um, we were able to highlight some of our existing clients, people that have been um, part of the RT Park and living and operating businesses in the USVI for several years to get their perspective on what, um, what life is like down here, what some of the advantages and what some of the challenges of doing business in the Virgin Islands are. Um, and as with our last panel, we'll leave several minutes at the end for Q&A, so please um, submit your questions through the Whova app, and uh, we'll, we'll, we should be able to get to several of them. So with us today, we have Sean Snyder sitting next to me, the president and CEO of Zinuis. And coming to us live from Montana, we have Louise Stapleton, uh, managing partner of l, l Publishing. So I think the way we're going to do this is just kind of dive in, ha ask, have some questions and answers, and let Sean and Louise talk about just their experiences in the VI and with the RT Park and all that stuff. So my first question, and Louise, we'll start with you because you've been here longer. Um, what drew you to the USVI and kind of the RT Park program originally when you first came down here? My husband and I first moved to uh, the Virgin Islands in 2003. I Okay, <laughs> that's helpful. Thank you. Um, and it was more of a lifestyle of weather than anything. We've been living in San Diego, and San Diego is about 10 degrees too cold for me. Um, even though I'm from Michigan, it's a little, little too cold, and it got to be super busy there. Uh, brown layers started forming, so we took a look at the Virgin Islands. Uh, we also were interested in the EDC program at the time, but it was entirely lifestyle and weather that the Virgin brought us there. Um, we left for personal reasons for a few years, and when we came back, uh, came for the same reason again. Uh, we learned that that was in 2000. Came back for the weather and the people. Um, and a lot of And what's been to 2012, we joined the cat car. So that, that's kind of it in a nutshell. It's a beauty, a lifestyle, and weather. Three good reasons. Thank you. Uh, Sean, how about you? Uh, we we actually didn't come down for any of those reasons. We came down because of the the RT Park. Um, the company that I uh, that I run uh, had been in a position that the criteria that took us out to California, where we were uh, placed at that time, um, uh, had changed, and so we had been considering other locations for about a year at that point. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with California, it can. It's not necessarily the most business-friendly uh, environments. Uh, so we were looking elsewhere. A colleague of mine uh, brought up the, uh, uh, the program uh, here, and uh, which I was a little surprised by and a little dubious of, to be frank. Uh, but when we looked into it, uh, I then sent him, uh, a couple of my colleagues down here, to, to, to investigate it uh, in depth. And quite frankly, I first heard about uh, the program end uh, here in the Virgin Islands, and we moved down within six weeks. It was a very quick uh, uh, turnaround. And so that's initially what brought us uh, here. The reasons for still being here are many, uh, but uh, on what brought us down here, it was uh, the RT Park program. Well, I'm sure we'll get into all the reasons for staying as we go through this, because I'm sure that's what people will want to hear. But um, I did also, we want, you know, we've been talking about how great the RT Park is, how great the USVI is, um, but also there are some challenges to, you know, to living and working here. So if you guys could um, just, you know, what, what is your biggest one or one or two challenges that you've kind of encountered operating your business out of the USVI? Sean, if you want to go first. Well, the, the obvious one to always point to, uh, and I believe it was touched on in, in the earlier panel as well, is resources, um, talent, uh, skill set that, uh, that exists here. Uh, if you have a company that's heavily dependent on it, it's going to be a challenge. It's surmountable. 
there's certainly ways to get around it, but uh, that is finding uh, the skill set without cannibalizing it from the companies that are already here, which is always something you think about, is, uh, is, is a challenge. And then the cost of those resources. Um, it's another factor to, to, to take into, into account that uh, living on an island is expensive. Housing is expensive. Food is expensive. Uh, to give one uh, example, uh, you know, sometimes you just don't stop to think about it. But when somebody from off-island pointed out that the, pasta, the jar of pasta sauces in the refrigerator cost $14, so when you stop to think, yeah, it's, 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 it's expensive living. Yeah, we, um, so we have our summer fellows from the University of Michigan, they just came down and the first thing I did was take them to Plaza and it was just like a three hour shell shock about how much they're like, <laughs> yeah, cost me, I just wanna buy some rice, it's called, you know, and now, you know, I was like, get used to bananas and mangoes because they're yeah. very cheap. Um, everything else is a bit of a, kind of a special treat. Rum. Just, and rum, yeah, Rum's and rum. Cheap. Rum is so cheap, that's, cheap rum solves a lot of, a lot of uh, problems. All right. That's good. Um, and Louise, what about you? What, what have been some of the challenges you guys have faced? Um, when we first joined the program in 2012, uh, the bureaucracy, I mean, it still exists with the government, but it was really crazy um, back then. And, and it's improved a lot, but functioning with the government, just something as basic as getting your business license renewed. It wasn't something that, you know, you could just look down and do. Every time for so many years, they didn't understand what our key part was. They didn't realize the benefits. Every time I would renew my business license, it would get declined because it would say I hadn't filed any grocery tax. So I have a file every every year, and I would have taken all of my past grocery tax to PR. Every year, some different that would be in charge of approving the business license renewal process uh you know they were involved in that and it just every year over and over dealing with something different um people don't see volunteer information uh they found very easily and so in the beginning it's just no need to wear exempt from grocery seats um you know we still have to file a piece of paper every month they still do uh and here, the bureaucracy is that when you go into the government agency and you're filing any paperwork, you bring copies with you. They give you stamped a copy to show that it's stamped by the government with the data on it, you give it back to you, and you, you have to make sure you retain that copy because you know, the next person that gets assigned your file, granted, the chances are they're not going to get any of your documentation, and you're never going to get that So. Um, the, the bureaucracy of the government doing business can even as trivial as renewing your business license, uh, it makes it challenging. And uh, that's still exists. It's, it's, it's gotten better, um, but there's still hurdle after hurdle um, that get thrown out, seems. And some of those things uh, with the people now that the infrastructure that the park has now, it's got a lot better. Um, because everybody's familiar with what's expected, what you need to do to get in the process, and that's been a tremendous help. But it's the, it's the, it seems like a double the bureaucracy that you find in the states. I'm glad to hear that it's gotten better. That is something we've focused a lot on, especially with our on our compliance side, both in, you know fiscal compliance, but also things with business licenses and whatever other forms you might need. But it is the lack of, um, I think, digital infrastructure in some of the government agencies is, is something we're very aware of. And we're trying to push, you know, what, uh, what influence we can to digitize more forms. But it is, um, like we said, the, the bureaucracy here, I think, is larger than a lot of other places because it's still, everything's still analog. Everything's still on paper. You have to get it notarized, this and that. So there's a lot of that that adds up. I, I, if I just may add to that, uh, I, I, he, I've been here more, re I arrived here more recently than Louise did. Came here about three years ago. 
And um, the, I have to say that my experience has been less dramatic than what uh, Louise, I agree with her. There's certain things you learn, you do t get a duplicate copy and you make sure you, you uh, have backups of, uh, of everything. Having said that, it's all relative. If your point of reference is the US, yes, in that regard, you're gonna have a lot of, uh, uh, it seems very bureaucratic and it, it, it is a challenge. Uh, if you grew up in Europe like I did and have lived and worked there, um, less so. You know, I've, uh, yeah. I can you know, tell you more than a few anecdotes about uh, things taking a year and a half and it took 20 minutes in the States. So. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very useful perspective because we do, you know, most of our clients are from the mainland U.S., but that is, it's not exclusive and in our, you know, we are very open to mm -hmm. companies from Europe and East Asia, especially in Latin America as well that, um, well, yeah, they might find it a, a, a much easier. It's all relative. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so let's go. Um, thank you for that. I did want to talk about, I think, something you brought up, Sean, you know, um, what's been the biggest surprise to you about living and working more on a positive, like what's kind of, like you said, what's kept you here? What's really been what you found that maybe was easier than you thought it was going to be or has just been like more advantageous than even you, you maybe initially thought, you know, you said you're, you had staff that kind of proposed to you to move here and then you found things that are working out even better than you initially thought. It's, it's actually a bit of a hard question to point uh, to, uh, and because there's, there's, there are quite a few things. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, it's very different than what I expected initially. I moved here from the Bay Area. My wife and I were living uh, across from San Francisco in, in, uh, in Oakland for a while and uh, prior, to moving, uh, prior to moving here. And so it is very different. I spend most of my life living in and around cities. Uh, this is something that is, uh, is very different. Um, so probably f my wife, on the other hand, who grew up spending her summers on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, uh, for her this was familiar territory. And so nobody is more surprised than her how much I've fallen in love with the place. Um, it, uh, it's an interesting sensation you have when the plane lands, the door opens, and you get this kind of weight that lifts off your shoulders and you feel that you're at home. It is, it is not without its challenges. Uh, you learn that when you find something at the grocery store, you buy uh, many examples of it because you may not see it for another six months. Uh, there are little tricks uh, that you learn. You don't go just to one store. You end up going to five or six to find everything that you need. Um, but I don't mind that. Uh, for somebody who may have uh, been born and raised and spent their entire life in some of the conveniences we have, uh, we benefit from in, in the U.S. For them, that could be a bridge too far, could be too, uh, too big of a challenge. But I don't mind that. For me, it's been the beauty, the lifestyle, the, um, the people. Uh, in, in some ways, one of the, if you were to ask me actually what's been the biggest surprise, we have made more friends uh, in the past three years since living there than we did in, in the 15 years prior to that, uh, wherever we have lived. Uh, there's this almost like being back in college, university, uh, you're together in the foxhole uh, kind of uh, expat lifestyle uh, that you have here. And it's been fantastic. The diversity of people, it is very uh, US-centric. Um, so you may see less international expats that you might find in another location. But that aside, it's been, I, I, I can't sing its praises uh, uh, highly enough. Absolutely love the place. Yeah, and that's a good point. I, I think you talk about going to multiple stores, if like you're in you know, um, a bigger city in New York, Philadelphia, somewhere. That sounds daunting, but they're not that far away, right? Like the scale of everything It's, it's not here, a it's question so of much... proximity. Okay. It's more that you have to go to multiple stores. Yeah, you just yeah. accept yeah. that that's part of it? Exactly. Okay. That's great. And that's, I made and a cake for my wife for her birthday several months ago. <laughs> I had to go to four stores to get all the ingredients. ingredients. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and the part you said about community, that is something I think as the RT Park has grown, like I said, we've added 50 companies and less, almost 50 companies mm. in less than four years. You know, what, usually the first thing people ask us when they're coming in is, can you connect me with other RT Park clients so we can kind of give them a list of, of people that, you know, maybe live in their neighborhood or can help them kind of scout housing. And it's, we have a lot of clients like Sean and other people that are very, they're happy to, they're happy to welcome people here because they get here and they just sing the praises of the VI yeah. and they're like, yeah, we want to get more tech companies here. We, the more companies that are here, the better it's us. It brings more talent here. It brings more kind Indeed. of expertise. So it's a big, um, that is one of the benefits, I think, to our kind of, 
the way we focused, especially at attracting specific target sectors the last few years. Um, Louise, what about you? You've you know, obviously been here for close to 20 years now. What is it that's really kept, kept you here and what's been kind of the biggest surprise about you know, operating your business here? Um, well, I have to echo what's already been said and, and people. The number of interesting and wonderful welcoming friends that we made here and, and living in California, state New York, and Texas, um, and moving around, I never, we never maintained the relationships that we have here. We travel with our friends from here. We traveled all over the world with our friends from here. And we, we, we didn't have those kind of relationships in the past. So just to echo the, the amazing people that we've met here in and, 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 and the Virgin Islands and, and the friends that we've made. We, the culture too. Um, any place that I lived in the past, I, I never took so much pride in showing the showing island off and its beauty. When we have people that come and visit, take them into a jungle and having them see my country for the first time, it's it's, uh, it's magical. And then um, going to the market, um, used to be rain out at um, the fair grounds now, taking them to steal a bit of culture. Going to the Ag Fest, going to St. Patty's Day Parade. I mean, there's so many, so many interesting, fun, um, different things to do in Virgin Islands. And one thing that surprised us is, is how much we love showing off when our family and friends come down to visit. Um, and you know, echoing again, it's a lot of it has to do with beauty, but it's also incredibly interesting and different. Um, that, that's a that that's been a big surprise to us and a big benefit of being, being down there. The first jump up I went to, it's hard to really like prepare someone for it if you don't. Just the streets are packed. Everyone don't even try. An amazing don't time. Like it's like you can kind of like there's carnival, but jump up just like oh hey, it's been a couple of months since we've had a and it's, we're gonna have a huge street party and it's awesome and it's but it's very I don't know how I would describe that to someone that's never seen it. It's you just have to like experience. Come it. and experience and it. It's, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Um, so thanks for that. One thing, and that we maybe have already covered this question and some of your other answers, but um, Louise, if you were if you were going to move here, you know, you were thinking about moving down here today. If there was like one piece of advice, one thing, and it can be positive or negative that you just kind of you wish you'd known before you moved, or you'd want someone to make sure that they knew if they were going to come down. You know, they're thinking about moving there, moving down here next year. What what would that be? Um, I guess it would be um. To uh, try to spend spend more time reaching out to your neighbors, um, and and living in uh, New York and living in California, they have a tendency, or at least most people have a tendency to to not approach your neighbors and talk to them and get to know them initially. You kind of you know get home from work, get out of your car, and you go to your home or you go into your house, but People here are so welcoming, and they have so much knowledge to share about what grocery stores go to, who has what, um, you know, what what events. I find out at local events, um, you know, our Thursday, all, all these things that are going on. So I would encourage someone that's coming down the first time to don't be afraid to go out and talk to your neighbors and get to know as many people as you can locally, because that's where you're gonna. Learn the ins and outs the fastest and you know, get the ground running. Something that you would no, I would I would I would second uh, what Louise uh, uh, said and uh, have the RT Park, you know, as you mentioned before, Matt, that um, uh, talk to other uh, people who've come here in the past uh, five, ten or more years, uh, other RT Park members, and they'll be happy not just to help you explain their particular experience with moving down here. But as Louise said, the the you know who to call, uh, get on the the text message list of who has the, you know, the latest fish that's come in, right. and uh, where to go get your meat, uh, your vegetables, uh, etc. Those little things uh, make it home that much more quickly. So I, I agree, uh, uh, get on that uh, as well, and don't assume that people keep to themselves. They don't here. Uh, they love uh, new. Uh, 
call it new blood, if you will, uh, that conjures up perhaps the wrong image, but uh, they, they love having new people uh, in, the, uh, in the mix, and they are very, very welcoming. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't say speak highly enough of it, and they will, they will tell you, oh, by the way, you need to go here, and this is the person you need to contact. If you got a problem with your car, which you will, yep. this is where, uh, uh, where, where you go. Yeah. The, the, the one other thing that uh, I just wanted to mention in terms of the, some of the challenges that have been, uh, that have been here is uh, we've talked about purchasing things and what is and isn't available on the island. You can ship uh, most things here. You won't get it same day with Amazon as you do in the U.S., obviously, yeah. but you'll get it within a week, and uh, you just need to adjust a little bit. Um, sometimes through you know the cargo uh, shipping uh, stuff, you can do it that way as well, but everything is surmountable uh, in, in, those, uh, in that regard. Um, one other thing that comes to mind, and I'm sorry, I apologize if I'm jumping back and forth. Oh, you're good. Uh, but uh, another challenge uh, that I've uh, that comes to mind is for families thinking to move down here, investigate beforehand because there may be a particular reason or a job that one member of the family is coming for, but the other member may have a more difficult uh, time finding something. And I speak from stories that I've heard people who have come here for uh, thinking this is going to be a great opportunity, but the spouse has had a challenge finding uh, a job, and after a year has not, moved, uh, has not moved down here. So look at the schools. By the way, there's some very good schools here. Uh, actually, I should speak about St. Thomas, not St. Croix. Personally, I live in St. Thomas, um, and uh, uh, there's some very good schools uh, on that regard, but it may not be to everybody's, everybody's taste. Yeah. So do do your homework before you move down here. Uh, and if it's the right fit, uh, you'll love it. Yeah, no, those are good points. And that's something I always tell um, a client, like before you commit, before we sign any contracts, you need to come here and you need to go to St. Thomas and St. Croix because the lifestyles are very different. St. Thomas is much more kind of a denser urban area. St. Croix, you have a lot more space, but there's maybe less amenities. So depending on what you're in the mood for, but we always tell clients, like, and most of our clients, they get here and they, like you said, they get off the plane, they start to explore, and they one or the other island, and they're like, nope, that's for me, and they are fully in once they've kind of made the trip. But it is something you'll definitely want to check out. And the, the point about spouses and kids is a big one. We have, it's actually, I, in a weird way, COVID has helped with that because so many people are able to work remotely. So if someone's coming yeah. here for a job yeah, and that. their partner can still do their job remotely, that's actually helped us quite, which, again, one of the surprising benefits, of, I don't want to say benefits of COVID, one of the ways COVID has been side less, has, yeah, has side effects of unexpected side effects of COVID is actually, I think it's helped people that are, you know, have that struggle with relocating, that it's mm -hmm. easier for their spouse um, to kind of maintain their career path as well. Um, before we open up to Q&A, Louise, was there anything else you wanted to add or any other things that you just think people should know or any other challenges or anything you want to talk about? Um, I don't know, not, not too much. Okay. Um, the, the tech park, it's so amazing now. I, I wish I had some of the resources when we first joined, um, but the structure is in place now. Um, I know it's still evolving, but it's an incredible resource and, and uh, you know it, it's you don't if you if you're moving down here for the first time you don't have to do everything figure it all out on your own you, you really don't between the tech park and and local people everybody loves to help we all everybody's been pretty much in the position that you're going to find yourselves in um i don't have children so i can't really speak to the the um the schools uh I'm involved in the Virgin Islands Triathlon Federation. We do a lot of, a lot of kids programs, um, but it, it, it definitely, it's not for everybody. You do need to come down here and spend some time and, and figure that out. But, um, you know, if, it, if, if the island resonates with you, it, it can be a fabulous, life-changing experience to, to uh, living here and, and working in the Virgin Islands. Um, yeah, if you want to keep complimenting the RT park, I will let you, but we should probably, uh, and that, that is something, I know we've, we've changed a lot in the last few years, but part of that has been a really increased focus on engaging with our existing clients and figuring out ways that we can help them better, whether that's through getting through the bureaucracy, things like access to capital, you know, increasing, you know, Vista Plus to help find new, better employees. Like, we've really tried to 
not focus exclusively on getting new companies, but making sure that the companies are here, are doing well, and are growing, and have the resources they need. So that's, um, that is something that is kind of an ongoing project from our perspective. But um, we do have a few minutes left, so I wanted to make sure we left time open for Q&A from the audience. Oh, looks like we have several questions. OK. Thank you, Anna. So um, I guess I'll take this first one. It's uh, what exactly is a tech hub? And that I'm not sure that there is a kind of textbook definition of that, but it's something when we talk about building a tech hub or a tech ecosystem, it's really the USVI's economy is very heavily based in tourism. There's a few other side you know, sources. You know, the oil refinery was big, has now more or less shut down. There's rum production. There's a few other smaller uh, watchmaking was big for a while. There's some jewelry. But really, the point of the RT park was to diversify and create a more resilient economy. So when we talk about building a tech hub, it's, it's not that you just have a couple companies here. It's that you have a, a, you know, a critical mass of companies where you have mature companies that are growing and they're recruiting more tech talent here. They're also, you know, they're one of our greatest recruiters for other mature companies. People like Sean, they're like, yeah, I'm in the VI, I'm doing great. That's for someone else that's a business owner, that's, that's what they want to hear. But that also, once you have that, that also creates a better environment for entrepreneurs to start their own tech companies. They can see successful companies. They can maybe have an internship or work at one of the a local, you know, a Virgin Island can get a job at someplace like Zenuous and then go off, you know, they have the experience they need and then go off and spin off their own company. And, but, you know, that's mm -hmm. most tech, most tech entrepreneurs work in the tech industry and then, you know, leave and go kind of start their own project. So when we talk about a tech hub, that's really what it is. It's essentially building a new sector of the economy and one that is w far less prone to downturn you know the the us the usvi economy lost almost 20 percent of all jobs in the wake of the 2017 hurricanes because so many so tourism just dried up people left and a lot of those people aren't coming back tech you know a lot of tech companies need they need an internet connection and that's really it i mean yet power and their other amenities i mean I'm, I'm simplifying here but really it's much easier to get that company that operation up and running much faster after some sort of severe weather event, or you can leave the territory if there's a hurricane. You know, if you can't come back for a month or two, your business is still up and running in that time. And so it's not it's not such a devastating hit to the economy. So when we talk about resiliency, when we talk about diversity of or diversifying the economy, that's really what we mean by a tech hub is just creating an environment where there's enough people here that. It's drawing more talent here, it's drawing more companies here, and it's also creating a, a kind of a, a, fertile, or a fertile ground for new companies to start up and grow and expand here as well. Um, do they exist anywhere else? Yeah, um, so the RT Park actually is modeled after the Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. Um, a lot of the things that we do here are not, they might be new to the territory, but they're not necessarily new I ideas. Tech Village is a kind of a big multi-use development. That's something that happened, you know, the Research Triangle Park in North in Raleigh Durham has done projects like that. So um, a lot of when people when Peter was mentioning best practices, a lot of the work that we do is not, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're looking at other other jurisdictions. You have Puerto Rico next door, you have so I mean other cities that have places like Austin that really have kind of created a tech hub almost from nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we can kind of take ideas from there. We have we have advantages here, we also have challenges that they don't have, so not everything is a one-to-one -one comparison. Um, but that's really it. So what makes the uh, I must say if some of these questions are more geared towards you two. Okay, that doesn't really fit. Um, so why is this one unique? Um, I feel like we talked about this a little bit, but uh, one, it's in being in an, in an island, you know, in a U.S. territory, so there are some benefits to that. Your U.S. jurisdiction, U.S. dollar, very the tax incentives, you're not, you're not beholden to federal tax um, regime the same way, so it could be very, very advantageous from that standpoint. But maybe that's a good question um, for Louise and um, Sean. You've both done business, obviously, other places mm -hmm. than, you know, Sean, especially you've been in, you know, other, other countries beyond just the U.S. Is there... Could you say beyond you know the weather, or what kind of makes doing business here unique? Is there anything that stands out to you? Well, certainly the the RT Park program and uh, the uh, the other uh, tax benefited programs here provide a, a particular advantage that uh, make it uncommon, if not uh, not unique. There are obviously other tax benefit programs, but what, what the particular combination that you have here in the USVI you will not find elsewhere. Uh, we run a software company. Of course, our intellectual property is particularly important. 
Um, we, being in the U.S., we benefit, we're part of the U.S. legal system. Uh, we have that protection. That, for us, is uh, extremely important. In other tax-benefited uh, jurisdictions, you're not going to find that. Um, and uh, so that would be one of the, 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 the protection of, of the U.S. in general. We're a U.S. territory. Um, and although you may come here and you, you may not believe that you're in the U.S., you are to a certain extent. And uh, so that comes with all of its advantages. A few disadvantages, but in the most part, it's uh, compared to other uh, programs. Um, I would say that's what sets it apart. Okay. Louise, anything else from your perspective that you think really, you know, having lived in, you said, Michigan and California, anything else that really makes the RT Park program unique? Can you, can you repeat that a little bit? Again, you're asking, sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Anything that you would say, you know, when we're talking about the RT Park, talking about kind of the tech infra ecosystem we're building here that, in your experience from a business perspective, really makes that unique, um, you know, separate from places you've done business for California and Michigan and what have you? Um, well, I, the diversity of the, the clients within the RT Park, um, seems to be very unique to me in that there's not an overlap of a lot of the same types of businesses here. So that, that's been that's been fun. Um, and meeting the different clients and the different, uh, the multitude of resources that we have here if you want to engage in business to business. Um, there's, there's not there's not a lot of overlap. Um, and it's still a, a small growing uh, hub. Uh, to, to use, use your term, and that um, so you still have uh, an ease of communicating with each other and getting quick responses back. Um, it's not like a, a you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies within the park yet. It'd be wonderful if it gets to that point. Um, so that, that makes it unique that and that it's still still a smallness to this. Um, and still a, a sense of community with it, and, and there's a lot of diversity in the company here. Talk about target sectors. Those are kind of who we're actively pursuing, but we are, the RT Park is not restricted to just companies in those sectors. If, you, if you're a company that falls in kind of our tech and knowledge-based era and sustainable development, we'll, which again is a very broad definition, we are very mm -hmm. open to that. We, we, especially if it's a company that is kind of a unique, like we said, it's not, you know, there's a, there's, there's a lot of potential companies that are, just aren't present in the VI where you could feel kind of a, a niche there. We're, we're very excited to, whenever we hear from companies like that. Um, and then this last question, do you have to be physically located in the US VI to be part of the RT Park? And the answer to that is yes. It, it, the, the VI is not, I would say it's not Delaware. You can't have a PO box here and do business. There are, and we'll get into this more um, later this afternoon. We have a panel that's all about the tax incentives, and we'll have a couple of tax attorneys to talk about it. But the short, shortest way I can say that is your revenue has to be sourceable through the USVI to qualify for tax incentives. So it's not a situation where you can just register here and then route everything to the VI. That's not how we operate. That's not, and it's not really what, that's not how you build kind of an ecosystem. We want people here. There are also tax incentives you can take personally if you become a resident of the VI, and there are all kinds of, res there are res residency requirements that the IRS has along that that is all available online. And oh, there's, all of our forms are um, application forms, other information that we have, a program guide is available on our website, which I'm sure has been shared, but it's uvirtpark.net, and I'm sure it's on Whova as well. Uh, do we have any other questions? Anna? Okay. No. No? We're done? Okay. Um, so, yeah, this doesn't, oh, we might have to answer this in an email because I don't think we can fully get into this. Um, okay. So, if we don't have any other questions, we will go ahead and wrap up. Um, so we are going to break for lunch now. Uh, we'll have a little over an hour long break for lunch, but please make sure you come back. Um, Tim Reed, who is our keynote speaker, will be speaking at 1 p.m. You know, actor, director, producer, serial entrepreneur Tim Reed. We're very excited that he will be here at 1 p.m. You don't want to miss it. And before we go, I really want to thank Sean and Louise for being here and being such 
supporters of the RT Park and sharing their experiences and really, their, um, like I said, our existing clients are probably our, our best recruiting asset because they can talk about living here and working here and how, how positive their experiences have been. Well, and on that front, I'm sure that uh, this holds true for Louise as well. Uh, you can contact Matt uh, and get hold of, uh, of me and be more than happy to uh, give you, uh, if, you don't, if there are questions that you don't want to ask now in particular or you think of later, uh, more than happy to take you through the ins and outs, uh, the benefits, uh, what works well, what works less well, uh, and uh, give you um, the, the, the full picture of, yeah. of, of uh, what, what living down here and having a company here is, uh, is like. Yeah, I really, that, that's great. It's much appreciated. Yeah. Okay. Well, Louise, try to stay warm. I know it's snowy there, so hopefully you'll be back soon. Clearly, she's not in, in the Virgin Islands. Yeah, it's definitely not in the Virgin Islands. Yeah. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Bye, Louise. For everybody participating. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, wait, we have one more question? Oh, do we? Oh, <laughs> I, I apologize. I guess we had one that snuck in under the wire. So, anyone still watching? Oh, this is a good one. This might be from a client. How could we enable more cooperation amongst our T Park clients? Oliver, was that your question? Yeah. So maybe uh, I guess that's a good question for you, Sean, you and Louise. What what could you, you know, whether it's the clients themselves or the RT Park could do to enable more cooperation kind of between clients? Is there something you'd like to say? Well, to be frank, Louise, sorry for stepping in here. Um, but uh, from from my my perspective, that's certainly something that I would push back on the RT Park. Uh, I think that, uh, indeed, as I mentioned before, we're all very welcoming. Uh, we all come from diverse backgrounds. We would love to get to know uh, each other better uh, than, we, uh, than we already do. Some of the customers, uh, uh, or the clients of the RT Park, uh, we just don't, uh, don't know. Mm -hmm. um, we, when we, COVID, of course, has been an impediment to, yeah. to a certain extent. And I do know that there was a, it was a Christmas party the first year that I came here, yeah. got to meet uh, a number of people, and I imagine things like that will, uh, will start again, uh, give us opportunities to meet uh, other members. The, but I would like to see the RT Park leverage uh, the companies within the program better uh, so that they cooperate uh, uh, more, get to know each other, and then in, through discussion uh, find out, oh, do you know so and so, or oh, you know, I'm interested in this, uh, etc. Et so, uh, uh, and uh, if you guys don't pick up the ball, I will, <laughs> okay. because I would love to know, I get to know uh, um, additional members in the in the RT park, and uh, you know, the more uh, the more the merrier. Yeah, no, it's it's good feedback, and that is yep. like you said, we used to, and we are planning to k kick them off more again kind of in person, whether it's a Christmas party, whether it's just a, you know, twice a year we have a get together where clients can all kind of meet. Because that is generating B2B business among our TPAR clients seems like it's Once a month. Win. Once a month? One okay. month in, in St. Croix, the next month St. Thomas. Okay, okay. I will write that down. I will tell Peter. What Whoever about asked that question, uh, thank you. Uh, Allow me to, 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 to twist the, to yeah. twist the arm a little bit here. No, no there, it's, it's a good point. It's a very, it's something we need to do. A, I think I, we, we acknowledge that we should do more of. Yeah. Just a just a, a big dinner. Uh, we'll get together. Yeah. Well, also though, um, if participating in some of the other programs, uh, I met quite a few other tech park businesses um, by going to the incubator program and watching the the young startups. Um, young is not necessarily how old the people were, but um, the business themselves um, and watching the presentations and, and uh, their different ideas. Um, and then met quite a few other businesses, uh, for people there. So the social aspect, absolutely, that would be fun to do something once a month. Um, but also if, if clients can also participate in some of these other programs, like the incubator program, you'll, you'll, you'll end up interacting with other, um, our deep park clients. With Louise, the, the incubator uh, events once a quarter, or how rough and they are, mm -hmm. uh, great opportunities to meet uh, other RT Park uh, members. Yeah, and it's great, and it's it's great. We like to host those too for our you know entrepreneurs. You know, a lot of our a lot of our RT Park clients, the mature ones, are also investors. Or you know, so yeah, if there's a, you know, a local company that needs some funding, if an RT Park client can help them with that, that's yep. that's a win-win for everybody. Yep. So, okay. 
Well, thank you for that. I will. I have my notes. So, um, so like I said, uh, it is we're break for lunch. Please make sure you come back at 1 p.m. Tim Reed's a great speaker. He's got. I think it'll be a really entertaining time. And then we have more panels this afternoon that cover tax incentives and a few other very specific aspects of, about doing business down here. So, I want to thank my thank my uh, panelists once again, Sean and Louise. Thank you very much. It was it was great to hear from you. Thanks.